All right, well, welcome and thank you for coming to our Ash Wednesday service, the service that begins our Lenten season. And just to give you uh, some highlights, um, I just created a special service. Uh, and uh, so we'll have a responsive reading that everybody can participate in. We'll have a prayer of confession, which is really what Lent is about. And then I have a, uh, a brief sermon. And then uh, I just wanted to explain how we're going to distribute ashes. It's totally up to you. You don't have to come up and get ashes. You can remain in your pew. Or you can just space yourselves and come down each aisle and take turns coming to the center. And uh, I have a mask and I have gloves. And you have a choice. You can get it across on your forehead or across on the back of your hand. But the main thing is receiving the blessing uh, when you get your ashes. We'll also have a blessing for individuals who are watching this from home. And, um, and then uh, we'll all uh, say uh, the prayer together and have a benediction. So it's a little different than our regular service, but I think it's uh, very appropriate for Ash Wednesday. Join me now uh, at, as we begin our service with our responsive reading, which comes from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with kindness. Who satisfies you with good things so that you are renewed. The Lord works righteousness and justice for the oppressed. The Lord is gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He does not treat us, treat us as our sins deserve or repay our sins. As high as the heavens are above us, so great is his love for us. As far as the east is from the west, he has removed our sins from us. As a father has compassion for his children, God has compassion on us. Let us pray. Lord, we confess our sins before you. We confess that we have fallen short of your glory and your intent for our lives. Open our eyes that we may see ourselves with clarity and truthfulness, that we may have eyes to see all of that within us that is not pleasing to you. Forgive us so that we will be reconciled through Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us confess our sins silently. Know that when the Lord forgives your sins, it is as if they were never committed. Thanks be to God. So I was thinking about what type of meditation I would have um, for Ash Wednesday. And I was reading some other people's sermons, trying to get some ideas, and I really, I wasn't inspired by them, uh, because most of them were a bit depressing. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, the two sides to Ash Wednesday this day. And we're going to begin with uh, some readings. Our first one is from the Old Testament, Genesis 3, 19. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Or another translation would be, ashes to ashes, 
dust to dust. And uh, our reading from the New Testament is uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 6, 2. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he was committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain, for he says, in time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. When, when I was thinking about uh, this day, uh, it reminded me of one of my mission mission experiences uh, in Peru. I had a, a group of students with me, and I had another uh, chaperone, my friend Mark, and after they work uh, for a couple weeks, we worked in orphanages and women's shelters in Peru, and um, we end, and then they get to the last weekend after they've done their mission work, they get to uh, do some touring. So we were in Cusco, and uh, we had had a very meaningful time doing this mission work with uh, orphanages and women's shelters, and I think everybody was really feeling very positive. And so we decided to take them to a restaurant. It was famous for mojitos and traditional Peruvian potato soup. How can you beat that? And uh, so we got directions and we started walking. And uh, that part of Peru is very mountainous and the restaurant was at the top of a hill uh, following the Inca Trail. And as we winded our way up the hill, we noticed how beautiful all the rocks had been, um, I guess, laid on top of each other. Beautiful uh, masonry, but no mortar was used. They all fit perfectly together. And we went up and we ate together and talked about the last two weeks together and the work we had done together. And uh, afterward, we were sitting around outside, uh, and I noticed that there was a man there, and uh, he, uh, he had this look of a traveler. And it looked like he had spent his whole life traveling and exploring. He had long hair, he had a backpack, uh, and I just thought, wow. So me and my friend Mark went over to this man and, uh, and we said, wow, it looks like you've had an interesting life. And he started telling us some things about his life. And we said, you know, uh, I wonder if you could give us one piece of life advice from all of your travels. And uh, he thought about it and he looked at Mark and myself and he said, okay, you look like the kind of guys that have a bucket list of adventures. If you ever go to Spain and decide to run with the bulls, and Mark and I looked at each other because that was on our bucket list. 
And he said, if a bull is about ready to gore you and you have no place to go and you feel like that might be your last moment on earth, make sure you're running with a copy of the New York Times. And I'm like, well, I don't think we'll have time to read it right then. And he says, right before the, the bull gores you, throw the New York Times off to the side and the bull will chase the newspaper and your life will be saved. And I look at Mark and I said, he could have just saved our lives. That really is fantastic and tangible advice, thank you. And the man said, no thanks are needed, but hey, if that advice works for you with the days that you have left, make those days good ones. When I talked with my friend Jocelyn Gregoire, who's a Catholic priest, and I said, we we're talking about uh, all kinds of things a couple years ago about Ash Wednesday and I said well Jocelyn what are you going to give up for, jo for Ash Wednesday and Lent he said he laughed he said Grafton I've given up too much already and I said oh okay okay and uh, he said but instead of giving something up I take something up um, and that's really about what this sermon meditation is about. Everybody goes into Lent wanting to give something up. And they do say Lent is 40 days long. Most psychologists say if you can give something up for 40 days, you can make a habit of that. So 40 days is long enough to create a new life habit or to give up something for good. The scriptures talk to us about giving up sinful ways and then repenting and then asking forgiveness and then <coughs> accepting forgiveness. So those are the four steps. We examine our lives and give up our sinful ways. We repent, we ask forgiveness, and we receive that grace. All of that is because if we are sinful, we're separated from God. We no longer have that same relationship with God because of sin. Sin separates. But through Christ, we're able to reconcile with God. We're able to accept that grace and forgiveness and it reunites us, it reconciles us with our Creator. And we can then be united with God once again, for we are no longer, our sins are forgiven. So that's why this verse is about reconciliation. What about that ashes to ashes part? Everybody, uh, thinks, well, that's the depressing part. We're all about uh, giving things up and focusing on our sins and thinking about our eventual mortality and death. But there's more to it than that. If we just focus on that, that's the depressing part. But it's not like that. There's a story about a monk and Every day, he imagined that he woke up and a little bird, he imagined, landed on his shoulder and whispered in his ear, live today as if it's your last. How would you live it differently? That's what the ashes are about. The ashes are about not only a reminder that our lives are brief, but they're a reminder, not that we will die, they're a reminder for us to live. And all of these scriptures talk about how we should live 
in Christ, living with passion and love and the Spirit working through us. So when we receive those ashes today, they are not merely a reminder of death or Christ's sacrifice for us on the cross. They are a reminder to live more fully, to allow the Holy Spirit to live in us. And they're a reminder that, yes, Christ died, but Christ was also uh, risen. It's not an end. It is salvation. It is a reminder that because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, we not only live, but we are revitalized with this gift of the Holy Spirit. And we know that all of this is a result of God's love for us. It's all about love. It's not just about mourning. When we think about the death and sacrifice of Christ, and we go through this 40 days of introspection and mourning, only to wake on Easter to celebration and resurrection, there's a direct correlation between grieving and love. The more we grieve, it's directly correlated to the amount we have loved that other individual. So the more we love, the more we grieve. The more we grieve, the more we love. It's a paradox. And yet, the message in this scripture is not to focus on uh, only Christ's death but to focus on our lives, to change our lives in positive ways. Don't just give up sin. Pick up something virtuous, something fulfilling and meaningful. Express the love of the Holy Spirit and begin that today. Amen. When we uh, distribute the ashes, there's a number of traditional things that ministers or priests say. One of the things they say is ashes to ashes, dust to dust. A reminder that we live today. Another thing they may say is something about they may say something about examining your sins and repenting. But I usually choose the third thing because we have confessed our sins and we are forgiven. And we have read the living word and we know that the Holy Spirit is with us now. So the, the verse that I choose to say when I bless you in God's name with the ashes is you are reconciled. You are reconciled. You are one with Christ, one with your creator again because you are blessed and you are forgiven. So whoever would like to receive ashes, um, you may come down and just uh, just uh, space yourself accordingly.
reconciled through Christ Jesus. Be reconciled through Jesus Christ. You are reconciled through Jesus Christ. Let us pray together, saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And for those of you watching at home, uh, be blessed in knowing that the Lord is with you and you are reconciled through Christ. And now may the Lord God bless you. Your sins are taken away as far as the east is from the west. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.